Okay, it's not really sure what I want to do from now. Like, I think, um, there, there are a few more things I would need to teach for a proper beginner tutorial on Java, but I also really want to get started on making the game, and some of the stuff that I introduce will only be used for the game, and then other stuff, like you could use it for other games, but you'll have to learn it through the gaming tutorial. And then some other stuff. Well, I will, um, if there's something that I think you need to know for just Java in general, like one example of something that I'm only going to have in the gaming tutorial, in the, the text-based game tutorial, is I am not going to be making a tutorial for my beginner's section on how to make a sc actual screen so that we can run something outside a console. But if it's something like reading from files, which I do plan to eventually get to, then what I think I will do is I'm going to upload it as a beginner tutorial. I'll have it in that playlist. And then I, in my next 2D, in my next um, text based game tutorial, I'll have a link to it and say make sure you watch this video first just to keep everyone up to date because I want I want to keep the tutorials grouped by something so like anything that's beginner stuff or maybe not even completely beginner stuff because reading from files is not exactly beginner but it's still something that's pretty important just tech, just a .txt file or something but I think I'm gonna have I would put that in a beginner tutorial and then when I made a text based tutorial for it I would, or when I would make when I made my next text-based tutorial, I would have a link to it saying you need to watch this first in case I wanted to load all of our text from a text file instead. But I think yeah. So what I'm gonna I'm actually gonna start the text-based tutorials today. So I'm gonna close all of this and. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to follow everything that I'm doing if you've been following my tutorials completely. So we have our package here and we have net.javabasics and we can delete this because we don't need this testing thing anymore. So we, we can just I uh, didn't mean to paste. Delete. We can just get rid of that. So we lost that class but whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a new package. I'm going to I'm just going to make a new package. And I'm going to call it net dot text based game. Okay. And then whenever I make any sort of game, the first thing that I always want to do is I want to have a screen for the game to be played on. So like I'll make the screen. So I'm going to teach you how to do that right now. And it's it it, it involves some new concepts. It involves some new classes, but if you've been following everything and you understand importing, then it will be pretty s simple to understand. That's all I'm going to go over this in this tutorial. I'm going to go over how to make our um GUI actually our display actually show up on the on the screen. So like we have our eclipse window and then I'm gonna make a display window. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort stuff by packages. And actually no, I don't think that's necessary. I'm not gonna do that for this. So I'm I'm just gonna create a class called um Let's just call it display. And then what we want to do with this is first we want to import a few things. So we want to import um actually I'm not I don't remember exactly where this is located, so if we just type extends, if you remember extending, we're gonna extend a class that already exists in Java called Canvas. And if you just mouse over it, it's in java.odd. So it, if you click the error thing, it'll import this for you. 
another thing that we want to do is we want to do implements. This is actually something I didn't teach you about. Implements. That's something I didn't teach you about, and I can explain it right now, basically. So, implements means it requires an interface, which don't worry about making an inter interface, just use the ones that already exist in Java. If in some way later advanced tutorial I actually try to make an interface, I'll explain that. But basically what it does is it lets you use everything out of a class, all the commands out of a class, except you have to override certain methods. So I'll, I'll show you what that means. If you do implements runnable, then we have an error here because we did not implement we did not implement this abstract method runnable.run. So if you add, click add on Im implemented methods, then we get this whole thing here. And this here means that we're it's um it's implementing a method inside of the runnable thing. So the way the runnable thing works is it allows this class to be run in a thread. And threads don't don't worry about this too much. You don't really need to understand what threads are or how they work for this for this to really work. Because basically a thread is if you have multiple threads then they're all running at the same time. So when you multi thread a program you have multiple threads in the program running at once. But we're only going to have one, so we don't really need to worry about that. But what we want to do is, you should remember this, public static void main string, uh, string args. So yeah, you should remember this part. That's what we do to start the method. So that's what Java runs when you run a program. So what we're going to do in here is we're going to do new display dot start. And we didn't create start yet, so let's do that now. We'll do public void start. And then what start's going to do is we're going to make a new thread. Thread t equals new thread. And then when threads the constructor of a thread requires that you pass in a runnable object into it. So we're going to pass in this. And by passing in this, we're passing in the class that we made. So like this means the instance of this object. So we're passing in the object that we made here to our thread. And then the only reason we're really doing this is so that we can set our thread to maximum priority so that it'll run a little bit faster. And what you do is you do t dot set priority. And then you do thread dot max priority. And then do we do t dot start. And when you do thread dot when you do a thread object dot start, then it looks in whatever object you passed into it. So in this case, it's our display object that we created here. And it looks for the run method inside of that object. So if we did not implement runnable, then we would not be able to do this because it requires a runnable object. So now inside of our run method, we just type everything we want to do. So let's let's just make another method. We're going to type init, and then we're actually going to create this method. So public void init for initialize. It stands for initialize. And inside of here, we're actually going to create our screen. So, we're going to have to import some stuff to do this first. So, actually we can just type it and then Java will, and then Eclipse will throw us errors.
export it anyway. So we're going to create a new object. You haven't been introduced to this object yet, so JFrame. And JFrame is basically the, your Java window. It's your basic Java window. And we'll just call it frame equals new JFrame. And then in your constructor for your JFrame, what you put is you put quotes, and then you put whatever you want to appear on the title bar of the frame. So like here, we have all this. So let's just say we want text-based game to appear there. Okay. And you close that with your semicolon. And then you see we have errors here. So what we do is we import JFrame. And you notice this isn't actually from Java. It's from Java X dot swing dot JFrame. So if you ever hear anyone talking about swing programming, that's what this is. They're using a bunch of classes out of this swing file. And you can see a lot of them. That's lots of the different classes you can find in there. But yeah, don't worry about that now. So what we're going to do with frame is I should explain what canvas is right now. Canvas is like painting. You paint on a canvas. Canvas is basically something that you can draw on. So our canvas allows us to draw on it and in turn we can add our canvas to the J to our J frame and then whatever is drawn on our canvas will show up on the screen. And I'll go into more detail on that later because right now I'm just setting up the frame. So what we want to do with our frame is we want to give it a size. And we can do frame dot set size. And we want to give it a pretty good size. Let, let's just make it 600 by 600. But there's a better way to do this just for consistency. What you actually do is you go up here and you create a public static final int game game width. And the reason it's, reason it's in caps is because it's a final int, which means that you can't change it. I think I explained that. I might not have. But final means basically once the value is set, it cannot be changed at all. And we're going to set it equal to 600. And then we're going to do the same thing. Static final int game height equals 600. And then we're just going to replace 600 and 600 here with game width, game height. In case we need to reference the game width and height from somewhere else, I spelled height wrong. That way we don't have to change a lot of different values. We just change these two values, and then it'll affect everywhere that it's needed. And then the next thing that we want to do with our frame is we want to set how it's going to close. Because with you think you just press, press the X button, but that doesn't actually stop the program from running. That just removes the frame from your view. So if you actually want to stop the program from running by doing that, you have to do frame.setDefaultClose operation. And then inside of here, you type jframe dot exit on close, which means whenever you press the X button on the window that we're, gonna, that we're making, then the entire program is going to stop running. And the next thing that we want to do is we want to make it so that they can't resize our frame. Set resizable false. This is pretty simple. Because we don't want them to be able to resize our frame because we're not going to be putting in anything to deal with different resolutions. It's just best to leave that as false, unless you're more advanced. And then there's one more thing that we absolutely need to do, because so you can run this perfectly fine, yeah. I'm going to run this, okay. But you see, no frame pops up. And the reason is because we never set the frame to visible. We need to actually do this. Frame that set visible, we need to set that to true. Now, if you run this again, then what you actually get is you get your window that we've been making. We get text-based game as the title. It's 600 by 600, and you cannot 
resize it. So I actually accidentally closed it, but yeah, here it is again. And you can see we have our red stop here, which means the program is still running. And if we press this, it's going to stop running the program. But you can see if we press the X button, then it says terminated here, and that means that we successfully exited the program. So there's one more thing that we're going to do just because I like to do this. We're going to do frame dot set location relative to, and we're going to say null. And this is a more advanced method if you're trying to make frames pop up in certain areas. But basically, if you say null, which means nothing, then it's going to pop up in the middle of your screen. But you have to do this after you set the size. So now if you run it, you see it pops up in the middle of our screen instead of up here in this corner, which is pretty good. It's just a bit nicer to look at. And then the final thing that we actually have to do is you do frame dot add and we're going to add this so once again this is the object of this class that we're working in since it's not static that means that it has to be running inside of an object so that means that this is that object that it's running inside of so basically we're just adding our canvas that we can draw on to the screen. And in the next video, if I don't find something to make a beginner video about first, then I will probably go over how to actually draw something to the screen. It won't be anything fancy, it'll just be a bit simple showing you how it works and all. But, um, yeah. And then after that, I guess I'll actually get into, I'm going to be using a font te uh, picture file, which basically it means that all of our font is going to be loaded from a file instead of actually using the draw string method, which is in Java. We're going to draw images of all the font just because that's easier when you're trying to calculate the length of the font and actually make it fit nicely on a screen. But yeah, that's going to be the end of this tutorial. If you like it, then like the video. If you want to see more, su subscribe to my channel. If I didn't explain anything in here, you didn't understand any of the things that I went over quickly, like um, implements, or maybe this, if I didn't explain this well enough or at all. I don't remember right now then leave a comment on that and I'll probably make a tutorial on that but I'll probably put it in the beginner section and then if there's a specific thing that you want me to cover that isn't related to this game because I have a basic plan of how this game's gonna work but if you have anything that you want me to cover that isn't related to this game and is kind of a beginner thing then leave a comment on that and I'll try to do it I'll think about doing it, and if I think it's useful enough, then I'll make a video on it. Thanks for watching.